Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Could we stand and worship the Lord today and magnify Him in spirit and truth? Lord, we thank you for your mercy today. You are great and great. God, we praise you, we thank you, praise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We bless you today. God, I thank you, Lord. Come on, let's reach for Him, folks. We love you, Jesus. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Isn't the Lord good to us? Amen. Amen. He's gracious, and I believe he's great and greatly to be praised. Amen. Turn around and greet somebody and welcome them. Amen. Bless them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. We love you, Jesus. Sing my 
Praise God, praise God. I exalt thee, O Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. You can be seated. The Lord bless you. Amen. Let me just remind you, next Sunday is our Thanksgiving service at 1 o'clock. Amen. Do your best to bring somebody, at least invite somebody to come and be with us. Amen. And uh, it's a good time of fellowship. Amen. One with another, but also it's a good time of fellowship with the Lord. Amen. It's kind of a break from our routine of having an afternoon service. Amen. This is about the only afternoon service we have uh, all year long. And so uh, I want us to help this to be the greatest and the best one that we've had. Pray for it. Pray that the Lord will give us exactly what needs to be said. Amen. It'd be a wouldn't it be a grand time, a great Thanksgiving. Somebody get the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. They know what Thanksgiving's all about. Amen. Get the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. So keep in prayer this week. Fast about it. Seek God's face. Be prayerful over it. Amen. And also, uh, we thank you for giving in our food baskets. And uh, if you'd like to. You can continue to bring it this week, amen, and uh, help us out. We want to be a blessing to folks, amen. We, we want to help folks out. We want to show them the love of Christ, amen. Amen. And we've done this the last few years, and it's been a blessing. I know Sister Dixon told me that one person, one lady, I believe it was, uh, last year we gave a basket to her, and uh, so... Uh, she told Sister Dixon, said, this year uh, I'm able to give, and I want to give you something towards a basket. Last year I wasn't able, and I needed a basket, and now I'm able to give. Hallelujah. Uh, so, hallelujah. Amen. And so we are trying to show the love of Christ and, and be a blessing to people. Amen, not only just in the spiritual realm, but also in the <laughs> physical realm. Right. Amen. Amen. We, have, we have been able, by the grace of God, to uh, help folks out that were in need. Amen. I'll never forget a few years ago, uh, a preacher friend of ours, Brother and Sister Harden, and um, we, uh, she had a major heart attack. And a lot of bills, and uh, just asked for an offering. And uh, I never forget, he called me the, the I guess it was the day after uh, the, the offering got to him, and he was weeping and and very thankful for that. And uh, so the Bible speaks to us that uh, freely we have received, so freely we give. Amen. And so. This is just something we'd like to do and also pray for our revival. Amen. It starts two weeks from today on the 30th, right after Thanksgiving. Amen. A few years ago, I decided we'd have a few nights revival between Thanksgiving and uh, Christmas. Amen. I don't think Santa Claus ought to get the upper hand over Jesus. Do you? Amen. Amen. Praise God. They've already kind of went overboard with him. Yeah. Amen. I was in somewhere, I don't remember now what business, but it was it was Santa Claus wall to wall. And it wasn't even at my house. <laughs> Amen. So uh, uh, they kind of overkill him, but I, we all know who the real giver is. Right? Amen. That's right, it's Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm glad he gave us this opportunity to come and worship. Amen. In the house of the Lord. Praise God. So let's sing and worship the Lord again. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let's worship Him in spirit and in truth. I come to bring a sacrifice of praise today. Amen. Let's sing.
think that they can have church at home by hitting on the internet. Praise God. You not show up. Amen. Yeah, they will. Praise God. Well, I have to pray for them. Amen. But let's. But in all, in all sincereness, amen, if you've got some folks that's not saved and they are computer savvy and they can get on the internet, we, we do live stream, amen. And so it's just a, a point of outreach. Everybody, I said, no, that's not exactly, probably 85% of the folks has got a computer and, and internet and they're wise enough Amen. Much more wise than I am. Amen. To get on it and listen to our service. Amen. We may not be the biggest, but we can be the best there is around Amen. the town. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So give tonight in your offering as Brother Barnes and Brother Owens comes. Amen. Receives our offering. Give to the Lord. You can't out give God. Amen. Oh, I love Jesus, cause he's my Savior, he's for your baby, he's my shelter, when I really need I will follow Jesus, he loves me.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He loves us. Praise oh, God. He loves you. Praise he God. Loves you oh, Praise you're worthy, Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. bless you today. He's wonderful. Amen. He's counselor. Yeah. He's mighty God. Yeah. He's everlasting Father. Yeah. He's the Prince of Peace. Yeah. Amen. Have you met him? Amen. Do you know his name? Jesus. What is his name? Jesus. 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 Strength and what? Jesus. And salvation and what? Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, we'll put our hands together all over the house. Let us thank you in Jesus' name. We bless you today. We bless you today. We honor you. We praise God. We praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I love Jesus and I won't take it back. Amen. I've got my mind up to follow him. How about you? Amen. Amen. Let's sing again and worship the Lord. Oh 
appreciate the Lord for being here and I'm thankful for everything that he's doing for us and a lot of times he'll take you places in order to bless someone else. So when uh, my folks were in the hospital having their surgeries done that day, I, I just kept sitting there and I just kept feeling like that there was something else, some other reason that we were there. And before long, some people came that we used to live beside when we lived in Paoli, and they said their mother was in bad shape and she needed prayer. And we were able to go upstairs and pray with her. And after that, the burden lifted. And I was thinking, Lord, you know, so many times you take us places and you want us to be a blessing to someone else. It's not for ourselves. It's he told that one guy said, hey, you're not going through that, but, but so that the, I can get the glory, you know. I mean, for his, that the, the Lord would get the blessing for our situations that we go through. So if we just look for the good things, it always is there. He stood accused, rejected. Charges were listed. He never resisted. Just listen as they made their case. He removed all suspicion with his side.
There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. Upon the earth, the stress of nations were perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. Men's heart failing. Failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. I like to focus for a few minutes of our attention to the 26th verse. It's commonly have been quoted and parts of it has been quoted. Men's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. I want you to notice here today that as these men's heart was failing, it was failing for a reason, and that is what they were viewing or they were looking at. The, at, the environment that they dwelt in, cause their heart to fail them. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I want to talk to you a little bit about man looking at our environment. My, 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 my. Looking at our environment. Yes, Would you just raise your hands with me and help us together Heavenly to praise Father, we the ask Lord. Lord tonight. God, I bless anoint you the man of God. I love Lord. you and I praise you. Lord, anoint our ears that you we may an hear. Awesome God. God, we open up our understanding, God, my God, that we may, oh, Lord, take on the seed of the word. Oh, God, and present ourselves unto thee, holy and acceptable, my God, is our prayer. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated. Jesus talked about signs. They would be in the sun, the moon, the stars. Upon the earth would be stresses of nations, the sea and the waves roaring. It seemed to be an unusual time, a time that men had never encountered before. We need to note here that he begins to look and begins to tell them that men will begin to look after those things which are coming upon the earth. He begins to look at his surroundings or his environment. We will note here that our environment has a great influence on people. There are folks today, and I'm not talking about a natural environment as much as I am talking about a spiritual or an attitude environment. There are folks today that are spending thousands and millions of dollars to help the environment. I have no problem with helping and conserving God's creation. Right. 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 Sure. I, I, you know, I, and I'm going to be honest with you, I'm, you know, I'm not an environmentalist. I'm not a tree hugger. But I do believe because of men's carelessness and recklessness, yes that there has been a change yes. upon the earth, Amen. this earth we live on. 
I was doing the Bible study at the end of our series and yesterday, and I be began to talk about these things in the book of Daniel, revelations of the things of how there would be hailstones. And Second Peter chapter 2, and I believe verse 8, speaks about the earth being burnt with a fervent heat. I think that there are, is some degree of truth. I know we make fun, we make light of this thing that called global warming. I do think there is a uh, a teary motive behind that, ex except just trying to save the planet Earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I believe that there are some things that has got to happen. To fulfill scripture. Come on, brother. Amen. Oh, yeah. And I don't know exactly what God is going to use to bring about the fulfillment of scripture, but he's going to see to it that there is a fulfillment of the word of God. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Right. And so we need to understand that we need also to have a, a mindset of keeping that spiritual environment mm -hmm. alive. We find here that they begin to look after those things which were coming upon the earth. And as they were looking upon those things, it began in turn to affect them. It began to have an influence on them. And that influence was powerful enough that their heart will fail because of fear. And so I'd like to preach to you today that we need to be careful about putting our eyes on certain issues and certain things. We don't need to allow what we are going through. We don't need to allow the environment that we may be in at this moment to affect our walk and our trust in God. Preach. Amen. Preach. Oh, yeah. Amen. Stay with me this afternoon because I fear that there have been many that have cast their eyes upon the environment around them, the trouble. Hey, Amen. I read what one person said the day, and I thought it was pretty unique if I could remember it all. He said, it's amazing what your arms would behold or embrace if they wasn't so tightly wrapped around your troubles. Amen. 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 <laughs> it's amazing a lot of folks wonder why they're having trouble. And their spirit is cast down. But it's in a direct, amen, accordance with what you're looking at. Come on, brother. Amen. What your amen. eyes behold is going to affect the heart string. Amen. The eyes is the gateway of the soul. All right. If you're always looking at trouble and depressed things, you're going to be depressed. Right. Right. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're always beholding all of these downtrodden things, and it's amazing, amen, for years we find that they preached, I remember as a boy, they're preaching against the soap operas on television. <laughs> amen. You can miss watching them for five months, pick it back up, and wouldn't miss a thing. Amen. But they were swapping and divorcing and all type of trash, and folks wonder why they turn that thing off and feel so bad yeah. and feel so distressed and so depressed. That's all they've been watching from day in and day out is all of these things. And all of a sudden they, they think, my God, what's happening to me? Your eyes have become a gateway and it affected your, amen, your spirit and your attitude. Amen. Amen. What we need is getting a good red hot apostolic service. Woo! Feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Watching people shout and jump.
jump and dance and yeah. run and praise God. I want to tell you, it'll affect your spirit. Amen. Hey man, if you're around happy people, it's not long you're going to get happy. Right. Hallelujah. 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 You keep listening to upbeat music, and after a while, you're going to catch yourself doing this number. Or nodding your head to the beat of the music. Amen. But, oh, God, help us to know today that some folks don't understand why their hearts are failing and they're so fearful. It's because they've got their eyes glued to the surroundings and to the environment. Amen. I don't understand why folks uh, don't make it a, a point in their life to be in revival and be in church and be among God's folks and be in what the Spirit of the Lord. My God, I want to get out of that world. Amen. Amen. I said, I want to get out of that world. I want to escape for a few minutes. I said, I want to escape for a few minutes out of the pressure, out of the environment. I want to tell you the presence of the Lord is in this place and it affects us. If we will allow it, it will change us. Amen. And so give us some folks today that knows how to come and worship God and say, wait a minute, I've been affected way too long by the environment, by a worldly environment, by a cast down environment, amen, by a wicked environment, by an environment that's filled with sin and iniquity. Oh, God, bring me into the house of the Lord where I can feel His presence, where I can find and feel the love of God. Praise God. The men's heart powers were shaken. We are living in a very shaking world. There are all manners of things that used, once used to seem stable now have become fragile and move with the least current. Peter got out of the boat because of number one thing, he wanted to get out of the boat. He had rowed that ship so long and it was a stormy time. It was an unprecedented time. I think the waters was filling up the boat. One time when they were in the ship, Jesus was with them. But today he's not there. When they left the shoreline, Jesus was in the mountain praying. Bible said he constrained them to get in the ship and go to the other side. Third, walk, third hour of the day or the night, we would find that Jesus is now coming. He's walking towards them. They are caught in the storm. And when they first saw him, they said it's a spirit and they cried out because of fear. But Jesus said, be not afraid, it is I. Amen. Be of good cheer. Mm -hmm. Peter said, if it's you, Lord, bid me. Bid me. Call for me or allow me to come to you. Here was a man that had a desire in the midst of it all. And I'm going to tell you, the storm had not ceased at this moment. Mm -hmm. The winds have not abated. Right. The waves have not come to a standstill. Come what brought fear and panic some time ago in their life is still with them. But today, at this moment, we would find that Peter is asking, I want to go to you. Mm -hmm. yes. What we are needing today, the devil would love to hem you into a corner. Right. Mm -hmm. And he would keep the wind blowing. He would keep the storm or the waves over your head. 
But this is something that resters in my spirit today. That in the midst of a storm, there was a man that said, I want to get to where Jesus is at. Amen. I find in most cases, when storms come, a lot of folks want to hunker down and ride the storm out. I'm not casting stones at, at that type of mentality. But I am amazed at this man's faith, fortitude, courage, whatever you want to call it. While this storm is raging, All right. mm -hmm. there's a man saying, I want to get close to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Preach, brother. I believe that there is some signs. I believe there's some things that are telling that when we are in a storm and we, do, we refuse to hunker down and ride it out, whatever the storm breaks, tears up, takes away, we're going, amen, to be satisfied with it. We're not going to endanger anything. We're not going to take a step of faith. We're not going to venture out in the midst of the storm. Amen. We're going to latch it all down. And we're going to ride it out. But oh, give us some folks tonight that knows how to say, Hey, that I heard a voice. And that voice said it's Jesus. I don't need to be fearful. I don't need to be afraid. I can be of good courage. And so if that's Him, I want to go to Him. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there's going to be a storm. There's going to be a shaking of the powers in heaven and in earth. But give us some folks that says and petitions the heavenlies and says, Hey, in the midst of a storm, I want to have revival. In the midst of a storm, I want to get closer to Jesus than I've ever been before. If that's your heart's desire, would you clap your hands? Would you exalt His name? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hold on, Pastor Allen. You just wait till this storm's over. And I'll, 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 I'll get it to you. I'll vow. I'll make a concerted effort to, for the Lord. I'll make a concerted effort to pray more. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, amen, I'm, there's something about the good times when the storm ceases and the waves are calm. Amen. People have a tendency to resort back and to forget amen. what they have promised, forget what they have vowed to God, forget the commitment they said they're going to have with God amen. because now the storm has ceased. I want to tell you, God may have brought that storm or allowed that storm to come into your Woo! life, amen, yeah. for you to make a concerted on, effort to get closer to him that you can touch the him in his garment that you would pray more that you would commit more of your life and your well being to him praise God of some vows and some commitments that you have made in past storms of your life that you was going to do more, that you were going to see more done in your walk with God. But my friend, the sun rose. Come on, and brother. Then the morning came and it was a clear morning. It was a still morning and suddenly you forgot the commitment that you made and the vow that you promised God. Amen. I'm here to recall you to your commitment. I'm here to call you to return Hallelujah. to your vow. I'm 
fulfill your obligation. Yeah. Fulfill your vow to God today. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? Are we reading off the same page this night? Come on, we need somebody. Hallelujah. I'll go back. I'll recommit. Praise God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, folks. I'm not trying to build you up. I feel the Spirit of the Lord here. Amen. Hallelujah. We need some folks that will look and hear the voice of God. Yes, sir. And so I see that man in the in the eye of my mind. I see him way still hitting the ship. Waves are still rocking the boat, but he gets out of that boat. He gets out of it. I don't know how how he felt, Brother Nick. The first, the moment that his feet stepped on that water, and he gained his footing. <laughs> what a miracle! Yes. Peter can say I've done something that no other man has done outside of Jesus Christ. I walked on water. I walked on water. He, he crawls out. He steps out of that boat. Or he may have even jumped out. He was so thrilled to hear that the Lord said, come on. So he gets out. I don't know. The Bible's unclear how far he walked. But he came out of that boat. He began to walk, putting one foot ahead of the other. Walk. But then the Bible speaks of a change of events. Something happened. We would notice the Bible expresses clearly that he began to look or he saw the winds, the waves. He got to look at his environment, his surroundings. There's some folks tonight that got out of the boat. And they're wondering why they're seeking. They walked so good for so long. They were clear and they were confident come on, brother. that they heard the voice of God that bid them to come. So now what has went wrong with heaven? What has went wrong with the will of God? I want to tell you plainly, nothing has went wrong with the will of God. Heaven has not come up short. Heaven has not failed. Heaven has not weakened. Heaven has not faltered. But you and I, as men and women, we begin to look at the environment. We begin to look at the storm. We begin to survey, amen, the billows and the waves. Amen. The Bible said he began to seek. I want to tell you the best way. And there's a sure proof way. If you're going to fall, this is how you're going to fall. It's when you start looking at your surroundings. When you start looking at what those things are. Hey man, don't you understand? You got out of the ship, the ship when there was a storm. You got out of the boat when there was waves. Why can't you just walk a little longer? Why can't you walk a little further. Jesus is still there. Amen. He was walking to meet you. He's still walking to meet you. Won't you just get your eyes on him and not on your environment? Oh God. Amen. There's too many folks that's looking at the environment and their faith and their confidence is being shaken. We do not walk by sight but by Keep your eye on the environment. You're going to see. You're going to dream. Yeah. Yeah. 
trying to preach to folks. I'm trying to get you to lift up your head. I think Jesus gave a man a, a, a way of escape. When these things begin to come to pass, then look up. Lift up your head. Amen. For your redemption draweth not. Oh, God, help us today. You see, that's what happened. He said, don't look at the surroundings. Don't look at the earth shaking. But lift up your heads. For your redemption or your salvation is drawing nigh. It's coming. It's approaching. Amen. I want to tell you, when Peter got out of the boat, Jesus was coming to him. As long as Peter walked, Jesus was coming. Even when Peter began to sink, Jesus was coming to him. Salvation was on its way. Amen. But I'm preaching you a message that will save yourself a lot of frustration. If somehow you can get unfocused from all the torment and all the depression uh, and all the things that surround you uh, and get your eyes on Jesus. How can I do that? Well, there's several different ways, but two come to my mind. Uh, one is read your Bible, and two is to pray and to Yay. worship God. Yay. Yay. Hallelujah. said when you pray I want you to go into the closet amen that's why we commonly close our eyes when we pray it's because we're trying to remove our mind our spirit from distractions around us from the environment around us oh God that's what I'm looking for that men and women just like you and I can get in that closet amen and get along with God shut ourselves along with Jesus. Shut the world out. Amen. I'm praying. Hallelujah. I'm seeking. I'm looking for the day that we would come to church and we would not be distracted. Hallelujah. I love modern devices, but these things here and phone and other things uh, have become a world of distraction uh, to the apostolic world. Amen. I want to tell you how you need to get your mind. You need to get in the closet. You need to get shut off with Jesus Christ. No wonder why he said, come on, Peter. Uh, come on, James. And come on, John. Uh, I'm going to go to the top of the mountain. I want you to come with me. Uh, I want to tell you the Holy Ghost uh, is trying to lead folks uh, to a way uh, all along with Jesus and there on that mountain was the Mount of Transfiguration and they saw Jesus in a bright light they saw Moses and Elijah oh and Peter said it's good that we be here you better bet it it's good it's good to be with Jesus anywhere anytime hallelujah preach brother Well, why sit there? Why stay there? Amen. Well, the church house doors open. Come on in. Yeah. Amen. I, I, I'm sorry. I just don't understand. I come from another world. I understand that. Thank you, Jesus. But let me let me get into that escape. Yes. Let me let me come to the place. That I can escape for at least for a moment. Yeah. It, it may not solve all my problems, but it will give me a, a time of rest. Yeah, Amen. yeah but I, I come to church and on my mind is just going a thousand directions. I want to tell you something. You may, it's amazing what a man's spirit will pick up on, yeah. even though his mind may not be there with his body yeah. but his spirit because that spirit is what connects with the Holy Spirit yeah. amen. amen and you know oh you don't believe me well why would Paul say 
that when a man comes and I'm praying in tongues, he is unfruitful. His knowledge is unfruitful. He, he thinks I'm a barbarian. But I myself is getting edifying. Yes. I'm getting edifying. Amen. Oh, God, help us today. Amen. To come and in this place because I need that escape. Yes. I need I, I need an escape from the environment, from the situation, from the stress, from the from the heaviness that is in this world today. But men's heart failing for fear and for looking and for looking upon the things of this world. God, we need you today. The Holy Ghost has come tonight to tell you. Don't look at your environment. Amen. Look at Jesus. As long as his eyes was on the Lord, that was sufficient. But when it got on the earthly, and Jesus said to the woman at the well, you drink this water, and you're going to thirst. There's something about the earthly. Amen. It causes havoc. But I want to tell you, they that are led of the Spirit of the sons of God, when you come in the framework of the Holy Ghost like we're here tonight, there's a blessing in store Amen. for us. Amen. Could we raise our hands and love you? Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. You're a great God. You're a great God, hallelujah. I bless you, God. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your question name. question as I end tonight. Amen. What are you gazing at? What are you looking upon? Your environment will affect you. It will play havoc with you. God's here today. Can we stand? I think it's time for folks to refocus and get their eyes on Jesus one more time. If somehow the storms have caught your attention, captured your focus, Jesus is here to refocus you and say, come, look into me, look into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Would you come this afternoon? Come on, let's make a way to the altar. Thank you. Come on, young people, get the altar. Come on, mom and dad, get the altar. Come on. Make that effort to come. Make that effort to get in here. There's room. There's room. There's room at the cross. Oh no, I'll tell you something. I can tell by some of your actions. You're looking at the environment around you. Focus back. Focus on Jesus. 